In this video, I'll show you how to make a stacked bar chart like the one that appears here in the corner using the open source statistical programming language R. So if you're new to creating charts in R, I highly recommend that you come up with a plan in advance and just think through what you want to create and how you want it to look. So for example, for a stacked bar chart, one of the things that you want to do is to create a mock-up. So this is, can be as simple as using a pencil and paper and just drawing what you anticipate the stacked bar chart to look like, roughly speaking. Then the next step is to think about what variable will go on the x-axis, that's the horizontal axis of the chart, uh, what variable will go on the y-axis, and then um, I also like to think about what variable will be used to create the stack. So that's typically, uh, you know, the variable that will specify the different colors. So if a variable has like five levels to it, then you'd have up to five colors in a particular bar. And then that gives you a really good idea of how you need to aggregate the data so that it'll be ready for creating that chart. So before we get into creating the stacked bar chart here, um, I'm using our version 4.1.2 the dplyr package version 1.0.7 and the ggplot2 package version 3.3.5. If you don't know why that's important to know, check out the video on understanding R packages and with that we'll get going. So if you've seen the video on creating a bar chart in R, the code for this is very similar. And we'll start out by running this first line to import the CSV data and we see that it has 1,897 rows and 194 uh, variables. We'll also load the dplyr package and then we'll load the ggplot package. And uh, because we're creating a grouped bar chart, or I'm sorry, a stacked bar chart, uh, we're going to first aggregate the data. And to do that here, we're gonna take this customer A data. We're gonna use the group by function in the dplyr package. And then we're going to group the data, the customer A data, by both income and education. And we can take a look at this data set real quick. The income column here is categorical and has different levels of income as like ranges. Um, and then we have the education column, which is also categorical, and it specifies the highest level of education received. Uh, these data are fake, and like all of the other R videos, you'll be able to find a link um, in the description of this video that contains all of the files for this. So we will group the data by income and education, and we will save that as an object called aggregate by education and income. Not very creative, but that's okay, it works. Um, and then we will take that grouped object here called aggregate by education and income and we'll use the summarize function and in this case the only thing we're going to calculate is the number of customers so it'll take for each level of the combination of income and education it'll give us the n or the number of rows also the sample size now that's the same thing um, within every level of income and education combined so now we get a file that looks like this um, where for each combination of income and education, we have a num the number of customers. So this first row for two year or four year degree with income greater than 45,000, we have a sample size of 138 or number of customers of 138, et cetera. Then what we're gonna do is because we want the graph to respect the level of each of these variables, income and education, and there's this implied level to it, like um, the lowest level in the data set for education is high school grad, then the next level up is some college, and then it goes on from there. And likewise, income has levels to it also. We're gonna take this data frame here, and income right now is a character, and education is a character, and we're just gonna transform those to functions, or to factors, um, and to do that, we're going to use this mutate function in the dplyr package. So we're going to feed that function, this summarized data frame we've got here, and then we'll create an education column. This is already called education, so it'll effectively overwrite it. And it will overwrite it with the education column turned into a factor, and then we're specifying the levels for that, where we give it the order high school grad, some college, two-year, four-year degree, and advanced degree. And we do the same sort of thing for income levels. Now, once we run this, we take a look at this data file again, or this data frame again. Looks like it got tripped up here because I didn't run the entire line. So let me go ahead and make sure I've got both lines highlighted, and I'll run that. And then I'll peek at this object again. 
And now we'll notice that income is a factor and education is a factor. And I'm not going to look into it, but it will have um, specified the levels appropriately for that also, which will come in handy when it's time to graph it. Now, um, again, this code here is going to be very similar to the code in the video on creating a bar chart using R. And what we'll do here is we'll first use, using the ggplot2 package, we'll, we're going to use the ggplot function. And that function will take a few different arguments. First, we're specifying data is equal to, and then we're specifying this data frame because it has all the information we want to display. And then we're going to use the AES or aesthetic function. And what that function allows us to do is it allows us to map column uh, or variables to specific uh, arguments in this function. So here we're saying X is equal to education. So education will be um, mapped onto the X axis. And then number of customers is going to be mapped onto the Y axis. And then income is going to be mapped onto the fill uh, argument and what that will do is the different levels of income will specify the categories uh, or colors so it'll fill the bar um, with that the color specific to each level of income now if we just run this what you'll see is that we have this chart here with nothing on the inside but education is in fact mapped onto the x-axis number of customers is mapped onto the y-axis and this fill argument hasn't really come into play here, but um, ggplot2 uh, uses this concept of the grammar of graphics. And the way it works is that we layer on different elements together. So this is the first layer here. And then the next layer we're gonna add on to it is uh, the geom bar function here, which will impose a bar graph. And this geom bar function takes a couple of different arguments. You can specify the position here, and we're going to specify this as stack. So it will uh, stack the different levels by this fill variable here, income. And then we're going to use stat equals identity, indicating that the Y values are going to simply be themselves, which are the number of customers column here. So now, if we run this line inclusive of that geom bar function, we see that we have a graph now where we have the bars and then it's filled in, the bars are filled in by the different levels of income. Now, by this point, we've largely accomplished what we set out to accomplish, but um, sometimes customers want you to add other characteristics to this chart and it could be more helpful to have other characteristics like text um, labels here. And so what we're going to do to add that is we'll use the geom text function. And this will just be another layer we're adding on to the string of functions for using the ggplot package. Um, this next portion of that will be the geom text function. And we're going to use the AES or aesthetic function within that to map on the number of customers column to the label argument. So this is telling our that the text that we want to add is the number of customers values here and we're going to treat that as the labels for the bars now another important characteristic here is that um, i'll show you what will happen if we do that just sort of by default i'm pasting that here and then i i'm just using the geom text aes labels equal to number of customers and let me run that so you'll notice that they're all bunched up here so we need to actually um, use a couple more arguments in order to more appropriately align these numbers to their proper places or their respective places here, um, these different categories for income. And the way we can do that is within this geom text function, but outside of this AES function within there, um, we'll add a comma to give it another argument. And that argument is going to be position. And the value we'll give position is another function here so we'll say position equals and then position underscore stack indicating that the position of these texts need to be stacked and we're going to use a vertical justification of 0 0.05 but again like before let me just show you what happens if we don't use the vertical justification i'll copy this all in here but then i'm going to go in and just delete the part in here that says v just equals 0 0.05 we'll run that and see what the chart looks like so we see that that largely did it, but by default here, the text um, 
labels keep falling sort of at the borders of the bars or the, the categories here. And so what the V just does is it shifts the distance of that text so that it gets it closer towards like the middle of these bars. And you sometimes have to play around with the value for V just, um, but you'll notice here now by using 0.5, if I run just this part that includes V just is equal to 0.5, we see that they're placed in the middle. Now there's a little bit bunched up here um, for this group of advanced degree but we could tweak this if we needed to also. Um, this just to say that ggplot as a package is very flexible and very powerful for creating a variety of charts to varying degrees of um, you know, complexity and aesthetic prettiness or whatever. And so you can, you can do a lot to it. Um, but at a minimum, I usually include labels like this. And then we can also go in and change the x-axis label and the y-axis label by using the labs function from ggplot2 and then we can specify the arguments x equal and then the text which will signify that that is the text that we want for that x-axis label and then y equals and then the text and then that will give it the text for the y-axis label and so let me go ahead and run that part and you'll see that now we have um, number of customers with spaces and numbers capitalized and so is customers and then educational attainment on the x-axis instead of just education. Now the last thing that I want to point out because it's something that I'll do often is I'll have clients that want the colors to be changed. Maybe they have like a style guide or something that they like to adhere to. And so what we can do is if you specified everything like this prior to this point, you can layer on another um, function here, which is scale fill manual from the ggplot2 package again. And within that, you can give it the argument values equals. So we say values equal, and then we give it a list. And that the length of the colors that you give it here need to map on to the number of categories that you have for um, the colors that you're imposing. So like we're using the income variable, the income variable in this file has five unique categories and so we're giving it five different colors that we want to specify. You can also use HTML color codes, but R takes some colors by default, like you can type in red, white, yellow, those sorts of things. And so we've done that here. And so if we run that now, which is effectively the whole string of code that we have here, we'll see that we can change these colors to be the ones that we specified. If this video was helpful and you want to see more videos about how to use R for conducting several different analyses and generating different sorts of charts, please subscribe.